Let's switch over to the race to the White House and the four Republican candidates running to replace President Obama. It has been a fun filled week with talk about birth control, negative attack ads by super PACs, and candidates dropping out of debates. Now, you may remember last Saturday was the Republican caucuses in Maine, and Mitt Romney was said to be the winner, with Ron Paul coming in second place. Well, now the Maine Republican Party is going to re canvas counties to recount vote totals. And one county, Washington County, which actually was closed last weekend due to the weather, they'll hold their caucuses tomorrow. So there could be some new results. But the bottom line is this system, the process of choosing a presidential nominee, it's not working so well these days. We already had Iowa, in which Mitt Romney was announced the winner. It turned out Rick Santorum won. And now this. So let's talk about the system and also about the view of one of the candidates, Ron Paul with Charlie McGrath, the founder of WideAwakeNews.com. Hey there, Charlie. Um, let's just talk a little bit about this week. And uh, a lot of Ron Paul supporters are certainly pretty upset about what happened in Maine with announcements coming out uh, prematurely, uh, you know, the results of some of the primary results, the caucus results uh, being lost in, in, you know, spam mailboxes of the election head. Uh, what's going on here? Well, yeah, it's hard to say what's going on. I mean, we knew going into it that that, uh, that vote count wouldn't be necessarily uh, be able to be reported last week as being factual. It's going to take some time to, uh, for it to work out, and, and hopefully he ends up with the win in his column. But, I mean, you know, th this is, this, this is co so completely the, the typical left-right game. You know, the, the GOP has its favorites. Uh, Mitt Romney needed a win really bad, so he went and spent a day there. And he was he was announced the winner. I, you know, I think the good news is uh, Ron Paul in, in 2008, um, his performance it, it wasn't even close to what we're seeing now in 2012. So uh, you know, even though even if he comes in second, uh, even if he just remains in the middle of this pack of four, um, I think his support is growing because his message is. Uh, legitimate and it's the best thing for this country. And his message is certainly uh, very different from sort of the standard line of the Republican Party. A lot of, um, you know, kind of old school Republicans uh, are a little bit uncomfortable by the idea of Ron Paul, not just by his message, but the fact that he is unwilling uh, to, you know, preach what they want him to preach. Uh, I want to put up something that was on CNN the other day, um, something really, really interesting. It shows you not just how the people think, but uh, look at this. This is a poll that shows Ron Paul having the highest percentage, 52%. He's on the bottom. Romney is on top. I mean, maybe this just goes to show uh, how the mainstream media views things, um, but this is a picture actually taken uh, from somebody's television screen on CNN. What's going on here? I mean, why? It's not just the Republican Party. It seems it's also, and this wasn't Fox News. This was CNN. It's also right. some of the mainstream media that hasn't. Some of, all of, try uh, all the mainstream media. You know, they want to treat them like your crazy uncle. Um, you know, and you can you can blame a lot of reasons for this. I mean, if you want to go the conspiratorial route, which is you know the route I'm going to take right here, it's that 80 or 90 percent of the media, the mainstream media, is owned by a very very small group of corporations, about a half a dozen corporations, control 90 percent of the news that is disseminated in this country in the West, and it benefits them to have this fake left right battle between uh, so-called uh, conservative Republicans and liberal Democrats. But, Christine, we know that there's absolutely no difference. You talked about some of the topics that were up this week. You know, we're talking about abortion, gay rights. You know, these things are important. I, you know, I'm not trying to belittle these things. But the fact of the matter is we're, we're still engaged in the longest military engagement in the history of this country. We borrow 40 cents of every single dollar uh, to fund this military expansion. And there's only one candidate in the perceived left or perceived right that is speaking against this, and that's Ron Paul. We have not declared a war in this nation since 1942, but for the last decade, basically for the last two decades, we have been on a constant war footing. He's the only one with the message of, we need to bring our troops home, we need to have sound money, we need to get our own house in order and stop playing policemen around the world. So that doesn't benefit the mainstream media. You know, in this small group of that's not uh, not even talking about uh, another big issue, which is the economy. Um, not to go sure. mainstream on you, Charlie, but I, I want to actually quote something. I'm going to say it that Sarah Palin said recently. Um, she Thanks. said that she believes the primaries will likely end with a deal over delegates. She said yeah. voters have no enthusiasm 
for Republican candidates. Talk about the delegate aspect of this, because this is something that Ron Paul and his supporters uh, have been really good about. They have been, you know, the last ones at some of these primaries. Um, they're kind of, they've got their eye on the delegates. Well, you know, I'm not a complete expert on, on, the, on this process, but I do know that that is his goal. He knows he's not going to win. Everybody knows he's not going to be the nominee uh, for the Republican uh, Party to run for president. But what I believe what he's trying to do is uh, try to amass enough delegates that he will have a voice in helping shape policy uh, that is a, a, a sane policy. So I, I think, you know, for what he can hope for, the money that he has, I think that the best, from his point of view, the best thing he could do is keep on spreading his message, amass delegates, and then maybe uh, interject some uh, sanity uh, during the convention and maybe be heard and maybe speak for the, on behalf of the American people on some of the topics that uh, we've covered here today. Certainly, no matter what we see in the polls, that message has really, really had a hand in um, shaping, changing even the discussion uh, during this primary season. And I think it's an important one, one not to be ignored. Charlie McGrath, founder of WideAwakeNews.com.